The Marvel Knights imprint is a beloved chapter in Marvel Comics history and something that helped them pull themselves out of one of their darkest tailspins. It also just so happened to be the set of stories that turned this casual comic geek into a professional comic geek. So you bet I'm super happy to see what Donny Cates has for us in the pages of Marvel Knights 20th Anniversary issue number one, so let's hop on in and see what happens next, shall we? So as we join the comic, a disheveled Matt Murdock is crawling around the graveyard on the anniversary of the night Karen Page was killed. Ooh, yeah, not waste any time on this one, are we? Did I also mention that Matt is afflicted with horrible amnesia right now? He doesn't remember who he is, doesn't remember that he's Daredevil, and doesn't know why he's at this random woman's grave. It only gets stranger from there because he is accosted by, get this, Officer Frank Castle. Yeah, that's right, the Punisher, only he doesn't remember being the Punisher either. All he does know is a guy by the name of Bruce Banner has received messages in his dreams and because of that have given him a list of names of people to track down, people who are waking up, whatever that means. Understandably, this information overload freaks Matt the hell out and he decides to run for it. Frank tries to stop him and ends up hitting him in the head. Normally this would be bad, but here it actually ends up being good because it knocks a bunch of memories loose. In fact, it knocks all of his memories loose. Man, it's nice to know treating amnesia in this universe is like trying to fix an old rabbit ears TV. You just gotta hit it a little bit. It seems that Frank Castle and Bruce Banner weren't the only ones watching Daredevil 2. A shadowy figure off to the side who is later revealed to be Bullseye is also keeping tabs on him and all the other people who are waking up. The twist is Bullseye is affected by whatever's going on too. Even he doesn't remember his own name or what's going on. With his back against the wall and nowhere else to go, Matt tries to run for where he thinks is safe, mainly with Foggy Nelson. Too bad Foggy has no idea who he is and thinks that he's just a crazy hobo who won't wandered off the street, and I mean, really, with that beard, can you blame him? The mystery factor gets turned up a couple notches, too, when Matt pulls out one of his business cards to try and show Foggy that he and him own a law practice together, only to discover the card is blank and that Jennifer Walters the She-Hulk is Foggy's partner here. Before these two people can call the cops on him, though, Daredevil decides to make a run for it. It seems that everyone in the world around him has gone blind, blind to the truth, blind to their own history, and the only one who can see is him. So, Basically, it's they live heroes and Daredevil instead of Rowdy Roddy Piper. With truly no more options left, good old Catholic boy Matt decides that maybe now is the time he should ask the man upstairs for some guidance. Strangely, it seems God answers back to him in the form of Karen Page, but that's impossible, right? She's dead, or at least she was dead. Oh, but we're not done yet. Amnesiac Bullseye meets up with the man who hired him. No surprise, it's Wilson Fist the Kingpin, who seemingly has an entire set of five on superheroes. He also knows that he hates Daredevil and wants to ruin his life, but he's not exactly sure why, and that is because, get this, Kingpin isn't the one pulling the strings on this one. He's only acting as flunky for, get this, frickin' Doctor Doom. Yeah, that's right, this is all one of his plots. And it's on that jaw-droppingly crazy note that the comic comes to a close. So that's Marvel Knight's 20th anniversary issue number one, everybody, and I gotta say, this one gets off to a pretty solid start. I like the mystery. I like because because we're not technically in the main continuity, we can play around with interpretations of characters and offer some outside-the-box type of storytelling, basically everything Marvel Knights was known for. This first issue offers up plenty of questions to chew on, and I hope we get some satisfying answers down the line. Overall, I would give this one a very solid 8 out of 10. I enjoyed it a lot. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cape Joel again. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, why not check out some of these other videos I have available from the channel? Then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Cape Joel so you're always up to speed on what I'm doing next. And hey, did you know, outside just making great weekly comic videos, I'm also on several comic book podcasts, some of which are very popular. There's the Weekly Pull, which is the shirt I'm wearing right now. That one goes every other Tuesday. Then there's the Elseworlds Exchange over on the Comic Podcast. Pop channel. That's every Wednesday around 3 to 5, give or take. And then how could I possibly forget the comic Multiverse, the show hosted by myself and Matt of Fortress of Solitude. That one goes live on this channel every Wednesday at 8, and also SoundCloud and iTunes later on. Be sure to check out and subscribe to those if you haven't already. I assure you, you won't be mistaken.